Most people know Oatly as the new hipster oat milk that has risen to fame following the growth in popularity of veganism. The Swedish alternative milk brand is now widely regarded as the best substitute to cow's milk thanks to it being low in calories, cholesterol and saturated fat, as well as resembling whole milk that froths, making it a hit with coffee drinkers. But what most people don't know is that Tony Peterson and John Schoolcraft revolutionised the company making oat milk cool. Here's how it happened. Oat milk was developed by Rickard Oster, a food scientist at Lund University, and he founded Oatly back in 1994. With the right mix of oats and canola oil, the company was able to make a substitute for cow's milk that many of you may have had in your coffees today because the oil allows it to froth. But Oatly, using oats, is able to be more environmentally friendly than its almond and soy competitors which needs 6 times and 12 times more water, respectively. Despite this, for years the product was poorly received, and in the words of the current CEO, nobody wanted it. Whilst they'd created the right milk consistency from natural sources, the packaging was, well, boring, and they didn't stand out on the shelf. But here's where the new CEO, Tony Peterson, comes in, to add some spark to the firm. Well, no cow, no, 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 well, well, no cow, no, no, no. Tony, well. alongside the creative director, John Schoolcraft, redefined the Oatly brand to make it stand out as much as possible. The company has even run into controversy, especially with local dairy milk bodies long before it hit the mainstream supermarkets. Their ad campaign of It's Like Milk But Made For Humans landed them in hot water with LRF Milk, who took Oatly to court suggesting that they were discrediting milk, and they won, with Oatly having to pay a £100,000 fine and cancel the advert in Sweden. However, Oatly decided to publish the 172-page lawsuit on their website for the public to have their say, which led to Oatly sales rising by 45% in Sweden in a David vs Goliath contest. More recently, Oatly have been targeted by dairy giant Arla, who launched an ad themselves where a group of workers were drinking a fictional drink, Pjolk, which is punched off the screen as someone shouts, milk is milk and only milk tastes like milk seemingly a jab at Oatly. But instead of backing down and being fearful, Oatly fought back and trademarked the made-up words that they use in the ad and started to print them on its packaging instead. John Schoolcraft, the creative director, said, It must be terrible to wake up one day and realise consumers see through your propaganda and that your products are totally out of sync with what the planet needs to ensure its future. But despite having what might have been the best alternative milk on the market, international growth is not easy especially when it's so hard to stand out on the supermarket shelf, no matter how strong your packaging is. But rather than targeting supermarkets, Oatly took the path less trodden, by working with small independent coffee shops, with baristas becoming the ambassadors for the brand, by suggesting it to their clientele. When it comes to coffee, most people take the advice of the barista, who knows coffee like the back of their hand. Oatly was then able to cement itself in hipster coffee culture within artisanal coffee shops, where latte art is king. It became so popular in the US that in 2018, there was a nationwide Oatly shortage which saw packs of six selling on Amazon for $200 as the company struggled to match consumer demand before they opened their US manufacturing plant in New Jersey. Their success has seen sales revenue double each year since 2017, with 2019 sales expected to be over $200 million. But the success hasn't been all down to coffee shops, but also its wild stance on marketing, which is the responsibility of the aforementioned Tony Peterson and John Schoolcraft. Schoolcraft joined Oatly from Carlsberg, who are well known for their own popular marketing campaigns, including the well-known If Carlsberg Did series. If Carlsberg did haircuts, it would probably be the best in the world. Together with the new CEO, Tony, who has his own talents, well, no cow. they set out to make the business be more human and not a logo. This included an ad campaign that has been described as nonsensical, with the sole focus of attracting attention by entertaining and almost being self-deprecating. 
The idea was to mix things up, even doing simple things like putting a hyphen in the logo for no reason. The goal was to get customers to pick up the bottle, making sure that every side of the carton had something to read, with the hope that once they have it in their hands, they'll take it home to try it. With a broad product range and a bright future, Oli has now gained investment from Blackstone as well as some Hollywood A-listers who invested a combined $200 million which values the company at $2 billion. And with their New Jersey factory now open and supply matching demand, the company continues to find support as veganism is becoming more and more popular and they attract the post-milk generation. Thanks for watching.